Watching Gears. And now, the Gladiator Search and Rescue Build, powered by Best Top. You know, some of the biggest news to come along in the automotive industry in a long time is the release of the new Jeep Gladiator. Because Jeep reached back into their past, took some DNA from the legendary Scrambler, mixed it with the current Wrangler, and morphed it into a modern four-door pickup. Now, I know you're thinking, well, a four-door pickup? I mean, what's unique about that? Well, what makes the Gladiator unique is the fact that the top and the doors come off. It's the only four-door pickup that does that. That is a cool option. So to show what a great platform this really is, we hooked up with our buddies at Best Top, and we decided to build a state-of-the-art search and rescue vehicle out of a stock Gladiator using a whole bunch of cool parts from the aftermarket. And we're going to have Gladiator updates on all the shows this season and on social media so you can follow along with the project in case you want to build something similar. Now, you're probably asking, why a search and rescue vehicle? Well, simple, because anything that goes on a search and rescue vehicle has to be functional, strong, and serve a specific purpose. Very similar to what you would want to put on your own Jeep if you were going to venture off-road with it, which is kind of the point of having a Jeep. So, since the removable top is one of the standout features of the Gladiator, that's the first thing we're going to modify. The factory hardtop features removable panels, but they're cumbersome and they require storage when you take them off. A simple solution to this is the Best Top Sunrider. Now this features a folding metal frame and heavy duty canvas material. And this mounts right in place of those original panels and locks to the factory locations for a weather-tight seal. Then, when the mood or the sun hits, you can pop the levers and throw back the top for a unique open-air experience. All right, that takes care of this part of the roof. Pretty simple, huh? And that's all we're gonna do on this project today. But we're just getting started on this project because we're also gonna deal with the rest of the roof. We're gonna do something back here with the cargo area. We gotta upgrade the rear bumper and take a look down the side of this thing. Kinda looks like a big white refrigerator <laughs> with no side steps or anything. So we're gonna add some of those. Also, the front of the Gladiator, not my favorite part of the Gladiator. So, got big plans to upgrade the front. Obviously, we're gonna need a new front bumper and a winch. Then there's the engine. Obviously, we've got to have some more power. And then, of course, there's the wheels and tires and the lift, or the lack of a lift. We have to add that. And then lighting. We've got to have some lighting. Then, of course, we have to have some security so nobody rips us off. And while we're at it, we might as well put an exhaust system on it. We might as well just turn it into a scrambler. <laughs> Hey, welcome back to Gears. It is time for an update on our search and rescue Gladiator build. And today we're going to be dealing with one area that a lot of people don't like on these newer Jeeps, and that is the grill. Because first of all, they're just plastic. Then they kind of bow out here in the front, and you got big gaps along the sides, and they're, they're just not very rugged. Especially when you compare them to the old CJ front ends or the old classic Gladiator front ends from those 60s pickups. Now that would be a cool front end to put on this Jeep, but that's impossible, right? Well, not necessarily, because this is Gears. And that is a new front end for the Jeep JT Gladiator. Check it out. This comes from Innovative Auto Creations, and as you can see, it's only three pieces, but it will completely transform the front end of your JT or JL Jeep for the better. Now, as you can see, we have a fiberglass nose piece that bears a striking resemblance to the old 60s Kaiser trucks or the military variant, the M715. You got a mesh grill in place, you got badging, you've got lights. This is a really nice piece. You also have a hood that's not only completely finished on the bottom side, but if we roll this thing over, you got a lot of really cool stuff. So let's get this in place and see what it looks like. The 
the stock grill just pops off and once again reminds us how cheap and flimsy it is. We'll also remove the lower bumper plastic pillar panels and finally the lower hood latches. The new fiberglass nose section looks so different you would swear there is no way that this is going to fit in the stock location. But Innovative did a fantastic job of utilizing the stock mounting points and it just slides in place and fastens with the original fasteners. The sides of the nose slide right up to the original fenders and bolt on with the lower hood latches, making this look like a factory original part. Also notice how the gaps are gone and everything fits nice around the fenders and around the lights. That's not usually the case with the replacement fiberglass panel. The hood is even easier because all you have to do is transfer all the latches, the weather stripping and the hardware to the new hood. Also notice that threaded metal inserts are used for strength in the hinge and any other high stress areas. Now it's just a matter of bolting it on. Okay, you've got to admit, this is a huge difference and a huge improvement over that stock grill and that stock hood. And the best part is, once everything's pre-fit like this, it just takes a little bit of light sanding and you'll be ready to paint this stuff. And the transformation will be complete. But this isn't all that we're going to do to this Jeep. <laughs> we can't keep that stock bumper or a lot of other stock stuff. You're just going to have to come back and see what we're going to do to it. Hey, welcome to Gears and our Jeep Gladiator project. Now this is where we're taking a brand new Jeep Gladiator and turning it into a state-of-the-art search and rescue vehicle. Now as you can see so far, we have completely transformed the front end of this thing by putting on a kit that kind of resembles the old 60s Gladiator trucks or Wagoneers, which is really cool. But what's not cool is those stock bumpers. Yeah, we got to do something about those. So. First thing we're gonna do is get them off of there. And eight nuts is all that holds the front bumper on. The new front bumper that we're gonna be putting on comes from Fab Fours and it's called the Matrix. And as you can see, this is made out of heavy duty steel plate. So this is no sissy bumper like we just took off. Also, you can see the workmanship on this is great. And it's designed to where it'll flow right into the stock fender flare. So it's gonna look really cool on that truck. Also, you've got places here for auxiliary lights. You have a place for an auxiliary light bar here. And then of course, you've got the place for the winch down low. Now, I know you're probably looking at this going, man, that is a lot of bumper compared to what we just took off. But the installation is as simple as the original bumper. Only eight bolts holds it in place. But before we bolt this thing on, we're gonna fit our winch down inside here because it's impossible to do that once the bumper's on the truck. The winch that we're gonna be using is Warren's VR Evo 10S, which is gonna give us 10,000 pounds of pulling capacity, which is gonna be great on that Gladiator. As you can see, you can mount the module on top of the winch or in a remote location. We also have the synthetic rope and the fair lead to go with it. Then we have the remote and the wireless option, which is really cool. And then we picked up a couple of epic shackles. Mounting the winch control module where it would be easily accessible required drilling some holes and cutting a small notch in the center of the bumper for the module to tuck into. Also, since we've changed the front end of the Jeep, we needed to grind some areas on the bumper to clear the lower fiberglass panel. However, it wasn't just the bumper that needed massaging. We also needed to cut a small relief in the outer edges of the fiberglass nose to clear the ends of the bumper. Okay, with a winch in place, now it's just a matter of bolting the bumper on. Can we come your way just to scoot? There we go. Then... Now that is definitely a change for the better. Now, the rear bumper's got the same issues going on that the front did. It's lightweight and it's not very functional. So we're gonna get rid of that too. The new rear bumper also comes from Fab Fours and it features the same heavy duty steel construction and workmanship that the front bumper had. And of course, you've got all the places for the factory trailer plugs and lights and sensors and 
all that good stuff. But there's more. It also comes with side protection and side steps. So this will allow you to step into the vehicle from the side, which is a great feature for this kind of rig. Also, installation is very simple, starting with those D-ring brackets. These bolt in the center of the vehicle to support the bumper. To support the side steps, Fab4 supplies side brackets that bolt to the frame using existing holes. The next step is to bolt the sides and the center of the bumper together. Then we'll take the whole assembly and bolt it to the brackets. And just like the front bumper, you're going to need an extra set of hands here because this is a heavy duty bumper. Finally, we'll finish it off by installing the cover plates in the side steps. So, we've not only put on a much cooler bumper, it's much more functional. With its heavy gauge steel and its D-ring hooks and these side steps that will allow you to step up into the bed from the side, which is going to be really good on a search and rescue rig and for what we have planned back here. You'll see. Hey everybody, as you can see, we have been busy on our new Gladiator project. Not only to remove a little bit of the ugly, but to also make a trail worthy search and rescue vehicle. Now, at this point, the new fiberglass nose and hood that we put on is off getting painted. So today we're gonna deal with the interior because based on what we did on this whole scrambler, a lot of you have been asking, can we put those seats into a newer Jeep? And the answer is, yeah, kind of. <laughs> because even though PRP does not make replacement seats for the new Gladiator, they do make a high quality seat cover that will give you that look with those seats. Take a look. The kits include covers for the front seats, the rear seats, even the headrests. And you can get them in different color combinations so they'll match the look that you're after. The best part is installing these are so easy, you can practically throw them into place. Okay, maybe it's not quite that easy, but it's pretty close because these covers are built to go right over your stock seats and then various different zippers and Velcro and straps are designed to hold them tightly in place so it looks like factory upholstery. This is one of the most noticeable changes that you can do to your rig in just a couple hours. Can't get enough gears? Make sure to check out the Tales of a Gearhead podcast, where Stacy brings a lifetime of automotive knowledge, friendships, and expertise to the listener. Also, check out our social media channels for updates and videos of Gears projects, as well as special contests, giveaways, and events. If you have a vehicle you want to enter into What Are You Working On?, go to stacydavid.com and submit it. There's also the online store and tons of other Gearhead information that will encourage you to get out there, build something, and go drive it. Hey everybody, it's time for the next step on our Jeep Gladiator build, where we're showing you how to take a general purpose vehicle like a truck or a Jeep or an SUV and turn it into something more specific. Case in point, this is going to be a search and rescue vehicle. And we started simple with heavy duty bumpers, a winch, and a front end treatment. And once we get the paint finished on the front end, we're going to get it all back together. But today we're going to focus on the one area that actually makes the Gladiator really unique, and that is the removable top. Now, you wouldn't think that would be the case because one of the most popular hot rod vehicles of all time is the Ford Roadster pickup. And in the 80s and 90s, a popular customizing trick was to chop the roof off of your pickup truck. In spite of that fact, other than the original Scrambler, the OEMs have offered very few options when it came to convertible pickup trucks. Matter of fact, the new Gladiator is the only vehicle out there that combines a removable top with a bed, which means you've got some options here. Now, the first option, of course, is to keep the original hardtop on there. And it's good and solid and all of that, but it's a hardtop which means that from here back, the only fresh air option you have is that little window in the back. If you want more than that, it means you had to get an extra set of hands, you have to take the top off, you have to find a place to put it, and then hope and pray you're not 50 miles away from your top when the rains come. 
which kind of defeats the purpose of having a convertible truck. You shouldn't have to choose between on or off. You should be able to transition between the two a lot easier than that. Now, the second option is one that solves all of these issues, and that is to take off the hard top and put on a soft top. That's what we're going to do. Now, the soft top that we're going to be using is built by Best Top, and it's available through Mopar. And this is the factory original soft top that they offer as an alternative to that factory hard top. Now, as you can see, it's got the metal folding mechanism. It's got heavy duty canvas material and of course all the brackets to put it in. But that's not the surprising thing. The surprising thing is how quickly all of these parts are gonna go in that Jeep. Let's get to it. First, we'll install the rear cab panel, then bolt on the front side supports, followed by the rear side supports. Then we'll just set the roof section in place and bolt it down. After that, you just flip it forward and attach it at the factory locations above the windshield. The rear corner sections are next, and they snap in place, and the canvas tucks into the side supports for a watertight seal. The final step is to slide the rear window in and attach it on the sides and the bottom. And there it is, a Gladiator with a soft top. Now here's what that means. You can flip open the top in a few seconds for some open air driving. You can remove the rear window for more air in the rear. And if the rains do come, you can cover it all back up in about 20 seconds. Now, what about the bed on a Gladiator? What kind of options do you have back here? Well, there's a company named Soft Topper, and they make a soft tonneau cover out of the same heavy duty canvas material as the soft top. It's got rubber seals down the sides. It's got latches in the back and it will latch down and seal your bed and protect your cargo from the elements. Now, let's say you need more room. You're gonna carry some big stuff. Well, you fold it up and you strap it in place and you store it right there. Now you have all kinds of room to carry your junk. Now, since this is gonna be a search and rescue rig, we're gonna load this bed up with a bunch of safety gear. So, we may not use this a lot, but that is a nice option to have. Finally, what about these doors? It'd be kind of nice to open those up a little bit, right? Well, Best Top has what they call the High Rock 4x4 Element Door. Now check these out. This is just a metal frame that is designed to fit right in place of your stock door. Look at this. Goes to the stock hinges, got a latch back here, and it really opens things up. Now they've got them for the back door, they've got them for the front door, and the front door, as you can see, even has a place for the mirror. So these are functional doors, but they're just designed to hold you in the vehicle, not hold the elements out. So since this is a search and rescue vehicle, probably not gonna use those very much, except on really nice days. But once again, it's a nice option to have. And that's the great thing about a Jeep vehicle, whether it's a Wrangler or a Gladiator or whatever. There's a lot of options out there to really make it yours. Hey everybody, it's time for the next step in our Jeep Gladiator search and rescue build. Now today we are gonna get serious about this bed because this is where most of the search and rescue action is gonna happen. Now I know the first question that you probably have when you look at this bed is, man, that thing is small and it is. It's virtually identical in size to the original bed on the old original Scrambler Jeeps, which means it's five feet from tailgate to bulkhead 56 inches across, which means it is too small to carry cargo like a traditional truck bed. But it's too big to be considered an auxiliary cargo area. It, it is a real bed. So how do you utilize something like this? Well, we're gonna show you how to do that by thinking literally outside the box. We're not gonna go long and wide like this. We're gonna go up, take a look. Now, what you're looking at is called the overlanding rack and it comes from Fab Fours. Now this is a heavy duty racking system that will not only give you additional use to your bed, but it will also utilize this dead area right here. Now the best part is this goes together like an erector set utilizing holes that are already in the bed. So there's no drilling, you just bolt it in. First, we'll bolt the sides on. Look at that, isn't that awesome? I love the way that slides up under that right. rail. Then the top tube sections. And finally, the front and rear caps and cross members. Ooh. 
Now, as you can see, this rack gives us all kinds of extra cargo space to hang things or put them up on top. I mean, this is perfect for an outdoorsman or a contractor, that kind of thing. And the aftermarket is full of all kinds of products that you can hang from this rack and utilize this area even better. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is a sliding rack system from Cargo Glide, and it's designed to store your gear up off the floor so it doesn't get kicked around. Now it'll mount right to the cross members of the rack there, but before we do that, we're gonna scuff it up, get some shark hide on it to protect it, then we'll get it in place. Then we'll bolt the bodies to the cross members and reassemble everything. Now, check this out. Just insert the handle, release the lock, and pull out the rack. It'll lock in place when it hits the end. Now, what this does, it gives you a place to hang bags, hunting gear, fishing gear, emergency equipment, all that stuff that generally takes up all the room on the floor. Now, the top of the rack is another place to store cargo. But anytime you start going up, <laughs> It gets harder and harder to reach your stuff out here. And that's not a good thing for a search and rescue rig. Fortunately, we have a solution for this. Take a look. This is the Cargo Glide Roof Slide. And at first glance, it seems like a normal roof basket that bolts to your existing rack. But there is nothing normal about this particular setup. With the roof slide, when you want access to your gear up on top, you just flip the lock and give it a tug. And it comes down to you and locks in place. Now you can load on your gear, your bicycles, your kayaks, all of your camping gear. You've got little boxes here to put small stuff. Strap it down and then when you're ready to go back up, you just give it a push and it locks in place. That is a game changer. All right, the last thing to put on was some sort of side protection because the gladiators don't come with any. So we put on some step sliders from Rock Slide because we want some protection on the sides of this truck. Now, the reason we went with them is because these are made out of heavy gauge steel. So they're actually going to protect the sides of the truck from rocks and brush and trail damage. But they also have a heavy duty mounting system. So you can load a whole bunch of guys on these steps and they're not going to bend or break off. But the best part is when you open the door, they have an auxiliary step that comes down then when you shut the door, it retracts back up. And it hides so well into the step slide that you don't even know it's there. Is that cool or what? Now, obviously, on a stock Jeep, that sliding roof rack and those side steps, really not that important. But if you get this thing up in the air, you get a lift on it and bigger tires, those are going to get really important. And we're going to prove that to you, but not today. That's enough for today. A successful automotive project takes planning and organization. But instead of using an old tablet or notebook, there's the Gears Deluxe Project Planning Book. This was designed to help you lay out a project, the parts, the tools, costs, and keep it organized with colored tabs, a pouch for receipts, and even a place to attach photos. If you decide to sell the vehicle, it serves as a complete history of what's been done. If you have a project or plan on starting one, the Gears Project Planning Book is the best way to lay it out and make it happen. You know, a few weeks ago, we started a buildup on a new Jeep Gladiator to not only build a search and rescue vehicle, but to also show you what kind of potential that this new Jeep platform has. And we started fairly simple with things like bumpers and a winch and a roof rack and a soft top, which by themselves don't really seem that important. But when you step back and look at everything together, you can start to see how it's becoming a cohesive vehicle with a certain use in mind. So today we're gonna to keep moving forward on that and deal with the suspension because once you look at everything we've done with this, the stance and the off-road capabilities of this thing are not gonna cut it. So let's get it on the lift and start taking it apart. All right, with the rig up in the air and the wheels off and a jack supporting the differential, let me show you what we're gonna put on this thing. This is Skyjacker's three and a half inch lift for the Gladiator. And as you can see, it has the dual rate springs. It's got heavy duty shocks. 
It's got a new track bar. It's got sway bar end links. It's got all kinds of hardware. And then to give us more flex and articulation through the axle, we went with these big, heavy-duty, tubular upper and lower control arms front and rear. You can see they have these big old heim joints to allow axle articulation. Then we'll finish it all off with a dual steering stabilizer. Now I know this looks like a lot of stuff, but believe it or not, it's designed to bolt right in place of all that stock suspension. So let's crank the music and get busy. This means removing the sway bar end links, disconnecting the drag link and the track bar, and pulling off the shocks. You'll also need to disconnect the drive shaft and various harnesses and hoses so you can lower the axle. Now it's just a matter of lowering the axle with the jack until you can remove the front coil springs. And that is all there is to the disassembly. The reassembly is just the opposite steps, but with all new parts. And obviously the first thing to go on are these new coil springs and these bump stop extensions. Then we're going to reconnect the drive shaft and some other things underneath, and then get serious about unloading that table. Next, we'll replace the stock upper and lower control arm links with the new Skyjacker control arms. Follow that with the new shocks, the new track bar, and finally the sway bar end links. Okay, that finishes up the lift on the front. Here's all the parts that we took off, perfect for a swap meet. But before we move to the rear lift, we're going to put on this dual steering stabilizer because this is always a good idea when you're going to bigger wheels and tires. Now installing this unit is just a matter of bolting the center bracket to the axle, setting the shocks at half travel, and then bolting them to the bracket and finally bolting the ends to the tie rod using the supplied brackets and hardware. And that's it. It's time to move to the rear. All right, lifting the rear suspension is virtually the same steps that we did on the front, but there's no steering to mess with, so it's even easier. So on go the new springs. the upper and lower control arm links, the shocks, and the sway bar end links. The final step is to put the wheels and tires back on, set the rig back on the ground so you can do your final adjustments on the track bar and tighten all the control arm bolts with the vehicle sitting at right height. So what exactly did three and a half inches of lift do for us? Well, take a look. I mean, obviously the Jeep looks better, but you might be thinking, man, you know, that's not really much of a lift. And please tell me you're not going to reuse those stock tires. They look kind of dorky now and they do. But this kind of lift is exactly what we needed to do first. So we could swap out those stock 30 inch tall tires with these much bigger 37 inch tall tires. Now you might be wondering, is that even possible? Well, you're going to find out. Hey, welcome back to Gears and the next step on our Jeep Gladiator search and rescue vehicle. Now, when we left off, the last thing we had done is put a three and a half inch lift on this thing and it helped, but those stock wheels and tires are kind of killing the look that we're after, not to mention the off-road ability of this thing. So we're going to take care of that today and we're going to deal with an issue that comes up anytime you put on bigger wheels and tires, the brakes. Now, as most people know, when you go taller and wider with a tire, you add more rotating mass, which your brakes have to stop. Unfortunately, your stock brakes were not designed to do this. So the bigger the tire, the less braking capacity you have and the quicker they're going to wear out. So the best way to solve this problem is to upgrade your brakes as well. Take a look. This is the Pro System from Bear Brakes and it's designed for the Jeep JK, JL and JT. Now it upgrades your front caliper to a six piston caliper and a 13 and a half inch rotor. And then in the rear, you have a four piston caliper and a 13 inch rotor. Best part is this bolts right in place of your stock brakes. Okay, with the rig up in the air and the wheels off, we come to the messiest part of this project, and that is disconnecting the brake hose. Because you've got to have a way to stop the flow of fluid through that hose or you're gonna take a shower in it. Now, there is a special hose tool 
that you can get. See, it has these big flat ends on there. It has a cam lock. You put it right over a hose, smash it down, and it seals off the hose, locks it in place, and you can do your work. When it's all done, just take it off. Do not try to do this with a set of vice grips because that will destroy the hose. If you don't have one of these tools, you just need to plug the end of the hose with the rubber cap. Okay, with the brake hose taken care of, it's just a matter of unbolting the stock caliper and removing the rotor. Next, we'll bolt the new bracket to the spindle. This is what holds the new caliper. Then we'll slide on the new rotors, bolt the new caliper in place, and reconnect the brake hose. The rear brakes are pretty much the same process as the front brakes. Remove the stock calipers and rotors. However, as you can see, this new caliper doesn't quite clear the dust shield. So it needs to be trimmed, and you can see where I've marked it to trim it. Now, you can do this with a cutoff wheel, but the quickest, easiest way to do it is with a pair of snips. Now it's just a matter of installing the rotor and bolting on the new caliper. Now, obviously, you're going to need to bleed your brakes anytime you do something like this, but you also need to spend some time seasoning the rotors and bedding the pads. And this is a process of bringing things up to temperature, letting them cool back down, and doing this several times as you break everything in. Don't skip this step if you want those brakes to work like they should. All right, now it is finally time for wheels and tires. And for those, we went to Mickey Thompson. The wheels are called the side biter lock, and they have a cool bead lock look and plenty of strength. And the size is a 17 by nine with a four and a half inch backspace. For tires, we're jumping all the way from the stock 30 inch tire to a 37 inch tall tire with these Baja ATZ P3s. Now these have a nice aggressive tread for great traction off-road, but not too aggressive where they're gonna howl like wild dogs running down the freeway making this a perfect combination for a search and rescue rig that will spend time on the road and off. Now that, my friends, is more like it. It's amazing what a lift and a wheel and tire combination will do for a vehicle. Man, this is awesome. And hopefully now everything that we've done so far is finally starting to make sense. And we're not done yet. Wait till you see what we do next. <laughs> if you like cars, if you like coffee, you're going to love Gears Coffee Cars. Because in each pack, you'll find a special blend of rich, robust coffee to get your blood pumping. As well as a collectible cartoon sticker and matching photo card of some of the wildest vehicles Stacy has built or featured over the years. Collect the whole series and be sure to keep an eye out for the ultra-rare Strange Brew card that are added to random packages to keep things interesting. It's Gears Coffee Cars. The best bean on the car scene. Hey everybody, we are back on our Gladiator search and rescue build. And today we're gonna to be dealing with lighting, more specifically off-road lighting. Because obviously if you have a rig like this, you're gonna to wanna to take it out on the trail at night. And having the proper off-road lighting is the only way that's gonna happen. Now, back in the day, the approach to off-road lighting was to get the biggest, brightest light you could find and mount as many as you could wherever you could. Needless to say, that wasn't very effective. It was just really bright. Fortunately, there are some companies out there like Baja Designs that have made a science out of off-road lighting. Take a look at this. As you can see, they've got driving combination lights in different sizes. They have wide cornering lights. They have work scene lights. They have little tiny spotlights. They've got big spotlights. They have rock lights. They have harnesses. They've got all kinds of stuff. And how you locate this on your vehicle is going to determine how effective your lighting is for the way you're going to use the vehicle. So this isn't just random selection. There is some thought and planning that goes into this. Take a look. For good auxiliary lighting here in the front, we're going to start with a pair of these combo driving lights. I'm going to put them inboard on the bumper here. And that has spots on the top and floods on the bottom. That'll give us great lighting going down the trail in front of us. Right beside them, we're going to add a pair of these wide turning lights that's going to throw light out into the side area here. Now remember, you can 
rotate these things. You can tilt them up and down to get the lighting to go exactly where you want it to. Now, the A-pillar area is another great place to mount lights. And Baja Designs has all kinds of special brackets to mount lights in this area on all kinds of vehicles. Now, just like the front, we're going to use a small combination driving light for great lighting down the road and on the side. All right, next are some serious spotlights. And for those, we're going to use these LP4s because it's a four bulb spotlight. It's going to throw light way down the trail. Now, obviously, a spotlight, you want to get these things up off the ground so the light can really go out there. And up here on the rack seems like a really good idea. But remember, this rack retracts to the back, so all this top area moves. So this isn't going to work. But if we come down here to the side, like that, it's still going to give us the height we need. We can adjust the light to aim at different directions, and it's going to clear the top when we open it. Now, since this is a search and rescue vehicle, it's important to have work areas around the vehicle, and they need to be able to see what they're doing at night. So we're going to add these work lights up here in this pocket to throw light out to a work area. And then right here, we're going to add wide turning lights to throw light back in the back. So when we're turning around or backing up at night, we can see where we're going. And finally, in the very back on the rack, we'll run some small spotlights to throw light back down the trail when we're backing up. The last lights we're going to put on are these big LP6 spotlights that we're going to put right in the center of the rack to throw even more light all the way down the trail. And by now, I'm sure you get the idea. We have lights all around this thing, each one serving a specific purpose. And most are tucked into the bumper and into the rack to protect them when we're off-road. Now, obviously, you can get all these lights with their own wiring harnesses, and that includes the switches and the fuses and the relays and everything you're going to need to hook them up. But we just put seven sets of lights on this thing. Seven hookups to the battery can get pretty messy under the hood. So we are going to use the Trail Rocker by Painless. Now, you've seen us install this before. This is basically a box that includes all of your relays and all of your fuses all in one neat location. You have one hookup to the battery. Then you have a wiring harness that comes out that goes to your individual lights. Then you plug in the switch bank that controls all of your lights right here. And in this case, we have eight lighted switches for eight different accessories. This is a great way to consolidate a lot of accessories. You know, it's a fact that most people keep valuable stuff like money and phones and computers and guns locked inside their vehicles. But if you have a utility vehicle, especially something with a soft top or a bed, well, it's almost impossible to keep people from slashing the top or reaching in the back and stealing your stuff. So having a lockbox in a utility rig is pretty important. And there's plenty to choose from. Take a look. If you want a locking insert for your factory console, that's what this does. If you have room to put a locking drawer under your seats, that's what this is for. There's also angled boxes for under the hood or in the bed. And if you need more storage, there's bigger boxes available that bolt to the floor or to the bed. Now, for our search and rescue gladiator, we're going to use the lockable insert for the factory console and the big box for the bed. But whichever boxes you use, what you're looking for is something with a good locking mechanism, solid hinges, and metal construction like these from Tuffy. That way, the good stuff stays in and the bad stuff stays out. To install the console insert, it's just a matter of assembling the sides and supports under the locking lid and then bolting it all down. This way you still have the original console top portion, but underneath you can lock up stuff that you don't want people to grab. In the bed, there are several places you can mount a box depending on what you're gonna use the rig for. For our application, mounting it to the floor up against the headboard is gonna work best so it's out of the way, still gives us easy access to the contents. Of course, there's not much to see once the boxes are installed, they kinda of disappear. Matter of fact, most people won't even know they're there. And that's kind of the point of a security box. You don't want people to know what you have, and you definitely don't want them to be able to get their hands on it. There's no doubt that this Jeep Gladiator has come a long way since we first rolled it in the shop. What started out as a completely stock Jeep is now a legitimate search and rescue rig with key upgrades being done in all the right areas except one and that is the area of navigation and audio. 
Now, obviously, most new vehicles come with a decent audio and navigational system, and it's great if you're trying to get through traffic or find the best hot wings. But if you're out in the wild and somebody's life could depend on how well you get there and back, <laughs> we need something better than that. Let's take a look. This is the JL3001 head unit from Insane Audio, and it's designed to slide right in place of the stock head unit in your JL and your JT Jeeps. Now, I know it doesn't look like much just sitting here, but this is actually a shockproof, weatherproof head with a big nine inch high definition touch screen that'll do things that you can't even imagine. Now, I know you're probably looking at all these hookups. That's what really grabbed your eye. And it's got everything for a GPS antenna to USBs to cameras to auxiliary outs. It's everything and it's not that hard to hook up. Matter of fact, if you can hook up a television, you can put this in. We're gonna prove that to you. The first thing that comes off is the center dash bezel and it's held in place with pressure clips and a plastic trim tool should pop it right off. Next, we'll remove the radio bezel. And finally, we'll pull out the OEM radio head and disconnect the wiring on the back. Now, when you set the original head beside the Insane Audio head, you can really see the difference in size. I know it seems like there's no way that this is gonna fit in the same space, but it will. We'll start by connecting the GPS and Wi-Fi antennas. The USB cables are next, and you have several of those, and they plug into the unit and then are routed to the glove box so you can recharge phones or plug in thumb drives with movies or music or whatever. We'll follow that with the backup camera hookup. And this not only controls your stock camera, but also allows you to add front or side cameras and you can even record with them. The unit also has plugs for HDMI TVs or monitors, auxiliaries for subs or amps, and even an external microphone. So use what you need and set the rest aside. Once all the connections are made, just slide the unit in place and mount it with the factory screws. Then reinstall the center dash bezel. The last thing to do is plug in the OBD2 adapter into the port. Now this supplies a Bluetooth connection so you can get engine data on the screen. All right, everything is installed and hooked up. Now, let's see what we really have here. First of all, this unit is fully integrated with the stock Jeep systems. So the steering wheel and the climate controls are all right there on the screen for easy access. The factory backup camera is integrated as well. To keep tabs on the engine, the Torque app will monitor your gauges, allow you to make custom changes, and even check and clear engine codes. For navigation, you have an SD card loaded with special navigation software that provides street maps, trail maps, and topography data in 3D. And as far as sound goes, you have all kinds of controls and settings and plugins to build the sound system of your dreams. And a micro SD card slot will allow you to store tons of data for music and movie collections. And finally, there are 3.8 million apps that this thing supports. Simply turn on your smartphone hotspot and connect it to the head unit, and now you have a smart Jeep ready for whatever apps that you want. And for offline apps like GoPro, you just download the app once, and it's there whenever you want to use it, with or without your phone. As you can see, this simple unit will transform your stock radio into a complete command center with virtually no limit to what it's capable of. Perfect for a search and rescue rig. You know, there's an old saying that man's best friend is his dog, and there is some truth to that. Even if you're a cat person, you get this. Because if you get lost and need help finding your way home, people send out a rescue dog, not a rescue cat. And since this is a search and rescue vehicle, we thought it was only natural that we tie it in with this great charity called Sardis. 
Now, what is SARDIS? Well, it stands for Search and Rescue Dogs of the United States. Check it out. Using dogs in search and rescue operations has been around for a long time. But it wasn't until the chaos of the earthquake in Mexico City in 1985 that rescue dog organizations realized that they needed to establish a national disaster dog standard. So a group of handlers and organizations got together and created SARDIS to give the proper training and development for rescue dogs and their handlers. Using primarily dogs from animal shelters, Sardis has provided training clinics in Colorado, Montana, Michigan, Kansas, and many other states. And they train dogs and handlers in specific search skills, like wilderness trailing for lost hikers or climbers, urban rescue for missing persons in cities, avalanche and fire rescue, disaster search for hurricanes or tornadoes, and of course, crime scene searches. They've also teamed up with the Returning Soldier Initiative to pair returning soldiers with rescue dogs, where the team not only benefits from the soldier's skills and training, but also it helps the soldier deal with PTSD and make the transition to civilian life. The best part is, if this is something that you're interested in for your area, or you know a soldier that might be, Sardis is always looking for people to start up a new chapter. So get in touch with them, and who knows, we may see you driving this Gladiator around. Hey everybody, as you can see, our search and rescue Gladiator has come a long way since we rolled it in here a little while ago. And we figured the best way to wrap this thing up is to literally wrap it. So we hooked up with the wrap artist in Nashville, and we came up with a wrap that represents the project. The backdrop of a mountain range sets the perfect tone of where a search and rescue rig will be needed. And the red accent line ties in all the red highlights that we put on the truck. From the seats, to the brake calipers, to the rack. The connection with the Sardis organization is also well represented, as well as the companies that made it all possible. Now, the magic of a wrap is how quickly it can transform the look of a vehicle. A couple hours is about all it took for Jamie and Tanner to get the wrap in place and get it trimmed out properly. And as you can see, the difference is astounding. The best part is, if you ever get tired of it, you can just peel it off and you're back to the stock paint again. And that literally wraps up the build on our Search and Rescue Gladiator. That includes a lift, brakes, wheels and tires, bumpers, a front end conversion, the rack, the top, off-road lights, GPS, and security boxes. Now, you might be wondering, why would Best Top want to be involved in a search and rescue style build? Well, it's because Best Top is a huge supporter of the active outdoor lifestyle, whether it's for work or for play. In my viewpoint, a real Jeeper, you need access to the open air environments. Mm -hmm. And when I see a hard top closed in and I'm riding by someone on a beautiful day, it actually makes me physically ill. Because <laughs> I'm like, I know we have a solution for you yeah. and you should have it. But outdoor people have got to have a way to carry their outdoor stuff. And the Jeep Gladiator with its little bed is perfect for that. For example, for a mountain or river rescue where you might need a canoe or a bicycle, this rack is perfect. However, for wet or foul weather conditions, the soft topper top will keep everything clean and dry. And for short trips, urban rescue or crime scenes, the best top tonneau cover will keep things clean and simple making this one extremely well-rounded vehicle.